this is a single bus processor and we are discussing how the instructions will be executed and what will be the control signal that will be generated. We know that each instruction follows the fetch, decode, execute cycle. We have discussed the fetch control signals in our previous lectures. Now we will see how this instruction which is now available in the I instruction register at the end of the fetch now how this instruction will be executed. From this instruction register, this instruction will now be decoded by the decoder and the control signals will be generated by the control logic. So what is this instruction supposed to do? It is supposed to load the register R3 from the contents at some memory address. So this address is specified in register R1. We are using indirect addressing. So whatever are the contents of R1, at that memory location, whatever data is available, that has to, to be read and brought into register R3. So load is a memory read operation. We have used memory or register indirect addressing. So R1, let's say R1 was containing 2000, then at memory location 2000, whatever is the data that has to be brought into R3. So how will this happen? First of all, we have to get the contents of R1 out because this is the address. And if the address has to be sent to the memory, it has to be sent via MAR on and put onto the address bus. So we will take out the contents of R1, put it on the bus. So we have this control signal R1 out. We will enable MAR by doing MAR in. So the contents of the bus now go into the memory address register. And from here, we are assuming that this output port is enabled and the contents have now gone to the memory via this address bus. So whatever address has been sent, that particular memory location will be accessed and we have also sent a read control signal. This sending of address and accessing of the memory, as we have discussed earlier, will require at least one clock cycle for the memory to be read if it is found in the cache and more clock cycles if the memory main memory has to be accessed. So we wait for the memory function complete signal. We have already discussed in the previous lecture. And once the memory location has been accessed and that data is available on the data bus, it comes via the data bus and we have done this MDR in external. That means we have enabled the external input of the MDR over here. So the data is coming from the data bus into MDR. Then we do MDR out. So this data is now available on this bus and we put it in R3 in. So we put it in R3 by enabling this control signal R3N and this is the end of the control signal. Now let's say, look at this instruction store R8 and 10. That means at this destination store the contents of R10. The contents of R10, now they have to be stored at a memory address which has been specified in R8. So whatever is this memory address, that memory address has to be accessed and the contents of R10 have to be put in that particular memory address. The fetch clock cycles and the control sequence remains the same. We have to send out the address. So we do R8 out, so R8 contents will go over here, MAR and address bus. So we do R8 out and MAR in. So the address is now available in MAR and now it has been sent to the memory. And now this data has to be sent to the memory. So we do R10 out in the next clock cycle and put it in MDR. And from here we do an MDR out external. 
and now we are sending a write control signal because we are writing into this particular memory address. So we send a write control signal and the address we had already sent on the address bus. We have sent the address and the data both. We wait for the memory function complete signal to be received from the memory which signifies that the memory location has been written into that means the R10 contents are now put into that address that memory address so we can end our control sequence here. So this is how the memory access the load store instructions will be taken care of in a single bus organization.